<clears throat> Welcome back to Nick Lane. This is Comic Corner, the classic, that's the known classic. This is episode number 1716, double shot number 1600 and I think it's uh, 64, uh, 54, excuse me. I have one DC trade, one more trade. Now, the DC trade I'm talking about here is the finale for this run. Yep. And pretty much in the way the final trade discussed for this character is to date there's like no other trades that to talk about when it comes to this character. What song am I ask? Batwoman Yep. This book this is basically Batwoman Volume Six, The Unknowns. Collecting the issues thirty five to forty of Batwoman, the second annual, a uh, future's end, and a uh, story from Secret Origins. It was from Sigil Orders number three. Which, this actually is the only story, only thing here, not written by Mark Andrego. Nope, this is by Jerry Hahn. So I believe it was like one of the artists of this book. I believe it was book. But most of just her as a kid, and basically her backstory of how she became Batwoman. This is semi canon to basically currently where we are now. Now, the unknowns. Is simply put, basically, Batwoman's Monster Squad, comprised of herself, Clayface, Ezra Demon, and Ragman. Fun fact about this particular storyline: this was uh, this was Ragman's post uh, first post Flash appearance. Ezra had previously appeared in the Demon Knight series. We also heard here by Morgan Le Fay. And because of this story arc. DC love story and Batwoman into supernatural stuff for reasons. The story arc itself is slightly better than the previous story arc. Yes, it is. But that's not saying much for a run that's pretty much been well despised by comic fans for years. And we have like, oh, we have a flash for like, you know, the characters die and then we kind of explain it. We also have where she's dating Nocturne now. Oh, by the way, I mean, in the story arc, she makes up with her because it turns out she's been manipulated the whole time. This bad fact appears of no as to start. Yeah. It was a completely pointless relationship. Yes. And a relationship I should have included on the relationship they're forced in comic fans. Because this one was definitely forced because there is no chemistry between these two women at all. It's like, oh, we had to have these two to come because, oh, we like to see two women make out. No, we gave a good story. I just see two women make out randomly for like no reason at all. That's thing with this book when it comes to Nocturna. Why does she have them strange reacts about? Well, my, oh, let's just have her, have her manipulate her, kiss her a lot, and that's it. Also, I forgot Maggie Sawyer does pop up in the storyline where she attempts to talk to Maggie Sawyer, but doesn't go very well. Nope, she doesn't want to talk to her. Despite the fact, you know, the letter was not technically sent by her, it was sent by somebody else. Yeah, and of course, if the character goes to space, yes, space in here. I'm really jumping shark in here. And, well, they defeat the villain of the storyline, who is Morgan Le Fay. Yes, Morgan Le Fay. For some reason, they have Batman will fight Morgan Le Fay. Despite the fact, it makes no freaking sense to all that Batman will fight Morgan Le Fay, but okay, fine. Heck, even including Clayface, you know, even that was completely random. Best. At least Clayface is featured in a freaking book. Yep. <clears throat> I give this book a 8.5 out of 10. Final thoughts on this run, which is the first book right here, and basically this writer's run, plus, of course, the whole series as a whole. And by the way, uh, here's a fun fact for you that's the last Batwoman we trade to review. Because there's nothing that... We were like, oh, what about Batwoman Logy? There's a new print of that. Uh, I've argued that sort of line, so... Yeah, uh, that, that run of Batwoman I've already covered already. It seems like, uh, maybe, like, I think maybe there's the only thing to do for her is, for solo-wise, probably cover her stories from Batman Urban Legends. That's it. First final thoughts on the Mark and Trigger run. Uh... Anyone reading these issues can basically understand why this run is so despised. 
But the, the reason why is because what came before this. Like, here's a quote for you from, these are quotes from the fifth volume. That, you're like, really DZ put these quotes on this damn trade? Andrego brings intelligence into a story without sacrificing the action continues to give KK room to grow. That is a lie. There's barely anything happens in the storyline. Here's another for you. Praise for Batwoman series. A thrilling story. No, it's not. That's from, you, that's from the LA Times. IGN. Who the heck trusts anything IGN writes? Offers everything a fan of the character asks for. No. Kate is next to hands based on this rejection your fans are. And that comes with Newsarama. I do trust them as a good source, but man! Wow. Like, these are the close to our context. Yeah, close based on monthly about lies. They probably paid them for doing that. Yep. Oh, here's one for you the number one New York Times best selling series. How the heck did Batwoman even reach that particular far? Here's our fruit, come become resources. I'm drinking these intelligence serve Oh my gosh, seriously. Yes. Why the heck would you consider basically this run to be number one best selling book on New York by some selling list? This run, uh, if I've heard from some people, it is really bad. And yeah, it is. It is a pretty awful run. And why the heck would anybody consider this to be New York Times best-selling list. Why, why, what is up with all this praise for the Mark and Drager run? I mean, all the book this guy has done is perfectly fine. I don't like the, I, 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 I like the guy's work and other ones. But this run is terrible. Really bad. I mean, are they considering the J.H. Williams and the W.H. Blackman run? Think that one would be terrible? This would be good? No. The J.H. Williams run was awesome. Yes, and this run was terrible. Like, the dumb thing is, like, you abrupt left off with a cliffhanger and you don't resolve it after the zero issue. After the zero issue, don't resolve it. Oh, let's see. Let's just resolve it in any that's already written and take away the creative credit from the actual writers who wrote this story. Yes. The whole web story arc. Which I issues 26 and 34 was bad. Really bad. This one is slightly bad because I like the monster stuff in here, but my gosh, wow. And I remember that when Josh Haynes, when he reviewed the second annual, you know what he did? He pretty much ripped apart the annual, and then he did something that I've only seen one other person do it for. You know what he did with it? He proceeded to fry a barbecue. Yes, the Batwoman name. Basically, fry all the pages. Because how terrible this run was for, for Batwoman. Yes, and thank God that Marjorie basically redeemed a character with her run. And it was stupid easy to end her book in the first place. It was a damn good book. I loved it. Yep. But in the case of the this run overall, I mean, had a great start with it. I think the first 24 issues are fantastic. Yes, the first hand is of accredited by Mark Andrego, despite the fact it it clearly was written by him, given the, what happens in this particular annual. Yes. I think that breaking up the relationship with uh, a Batwoman Magasaur was a terrible idea. All because of an idiot named Dan and Neo. By the way, nothing is Dan Neo's person or the stuff he's written. Nothing is that. It's ideas for other characters basically that suck. Like, getting rid of this relationship was a terrible idea. Yeah, you call it a reintroduction for Batwoman having her break up with her girlfriend. What seems like for no reason at all. That's a shock to the audience. Yeah, it really, really bothers me the fact that we give praise to a, to a really bad run. And we don't give praise to a really good run. Especially as J.H. Williams... As far as I can tell for him, I don't think he's anything with DC since he was fired for the book. Because I haven't seen probably anything since then. No. But in the case of Haiti and Black, what did he do after basically he got fired with the book? Uh, he did Electra. Really good book. Got canceled 11 inches, but it was really good. Aside from that, I haven't seen anything, anything else since then. Alright, moving on to a different book. We have Spawn Origins Collection, book 5. This book collects issues 27 to 32. 
Now, the first issue begins, like, not long after the events of Youngblood number 10, where they had Chapel show up in that, in that particular thing, where he, during the last couple issues of the first volume for Youngblood, where he shows up, kills some homeless people in order to get Spawn's attention, and then he kills himself and transforms into a demon. And that leads to a crossover, which surprisingly does not involve Spawn. You would think, though, a guy who's maybe on that crossover yet Spawn is, it's Spawn book is nowhere to be part of it. I mean, yeah, Chapel is a creation of Rob Liefeld, but man, I thought that was kind of weird, the fact that he did that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, here's the thing. There's no switching writers in these issues. Greg and Paul is still the artist in these issues. Yep, he's still the artist. Well, he's mostly the co-artist. With Tom McFarlane doing the artwork. The covers, uh, this cover here is Greg Apollo's. For the interior, is done by uh, Greg Apollo and Tom McFarlane. First issue, January 1995. Yep, we're following the year we're probably reaching toward the mid 1990s. Now, 32, that came out probably also in 1995, right? June 19th. At least, at least these issues feel like they come on a monthly basis now. Yeah. Yeah, eight and ten. Yes, I, mean, it, I, I love the fact that McFarlane does right, does bring up what happened in that particular book. So you could say, chronologically, from Spawn's perspective, this is taking place right after the Unbound Number Ten, which yeah, the whole thing of killing himself. They actually showed that on the panel, which I've seen the panel, and it was quite good that Lancard didn't show it when he reviewed Unbound Number Ten. I think it was just a year or two ago. I think he reviewed it. Yeah, in my opinion, that was a good idea because. It's a guy who gets his, gets his brains blown up by his freaking gun. And he turns from a demon and leads to a crossover. Which, by the way, Spawn is not... Is, the book itself has nothing to do with that at all. I mean, I thought it was nice. Then you have this other guy. You know, this guy who... He was born just is dealing with Death of Chapel who died right in front of him. He deals with new villain, Curse. I'm like, what the heck, McFarlane? Why don't you the heck we do this for? You have this really good moment. You ruined it by this guy, Curse, showing up. Who, appearance-wise, looks like a ripoff of, of Ragman for DC Comics. It was a wonderful scene of... Of Wanda and Terry Fritz General basically talking. And we have... Some cultists and... Spawn basically pick up his gun because... Uh, from what I've read, the reason why Spawn uses guns because apparently when he uses his chains, it slowly kills him. Yeah, of course, we have to have a two pressure, which I'm not going to show, which is simply put this guy cursed pinned to a wall. But yeah, you got to turn like this when you want to read it. I'm not going to show it because it's kind of gross. Yep. Wanda basically gets involved too with some of the stuff. Yeah. And because of some child abuse. Yeah, and we have this guy be a terrible father. Where apparently because they have a hot maybe comes over and works, so he basically takes out his own kids. Yeah. All because basically they couldn't have a, a hot meal when he came home. Yeah. Of course then we have Sam and Twitch arguing with each other. Yes, Sam and Twitch.
Actually, that's not uh, Twitch. It's actually uh, the Chief. Yep. And we have basically the guy who's the father base acting like a real jerk. And apparently he's got tattoos all over his body that says, I beat my kids. Like, what the heck is this, McFarlane? Yeah, and then of course the, the older boy is basically tired of the father's bullcrap. And it looks like he proceeds to shoot him. You have more weird stuff in here. Can by Chapel in a flashback. Of course, you also have Swunk and Hanged. Yes, Hanged. It was some trial going on. The Ku Klux Klan here for some reason, don't know why. Yeah. Thing like that has some random stuff happen here. By the way, those kids, their abusive father. Yeah, that's never brought up again in this book. Nope. Feels like we started some good stuff, and then we, then we go to some random stuff. That's what it seems like for the last few years of this book. Yeah, that's what it seems like, anyways. Uh, so some good stuff in here for this book. A 9 out of 10. It's a damn good book. Okay, so that's it. Stick with you. Next is going to be a review for One Piece. Then in our comic corner, and then I'll be in the bar bar until next. Okay, next video. Bye.